Hey, I hope you're doing well. So I'm watching the Rafa Medvedev final of the Australian Open. I'm, I'm in Costa Rica, by the way. Our students just went home yesterday, getting ready to fly out uh, back home a little bit later this morning. I just wanted to talk about a key element of Rafa's mental toughness after watching that fourth set. He, on a break point against Medvedev, had uh, a high close forehand volley that he tried to angle away and he hit the net and they showed a close-up of Rafa's face and there was this you, you've seen this reaction before from Rafa this like very clear discouragement and frustration and I want to call it anger and Rafa really gets angry you know with himself like a lot of <laughs> professional tennis players uh ten and and the rest of us you know tennis players uh a lot of times get with, with ourselves. Um, but he was clearly upset about it. He was clearly frustrated with the, uh, about it immediately after the shot. And I think there's this perception of, of uh, Rafa, like he's just the impenetrable fortress, like the, the immovable, you know, mental mountain. And the reality is he gets, he gets frustrated out there. He, he misses easy shots. Uh, he, he does get annoyed with himself. Uh, he does get disappointed. And it's, it's not about being perfectly, you know, even and steady. It's not, it's not about being the, the Iceman, you know, Borg kind of figure, unless that happens to work for you. It has worked for some players throughout the generations. But that's, that's not a, an outward, you know, self uh, approach or reflection that usually works for people. It's critical that you understand that showing the frustration, showing emotion is not, it's not a bad thing. It's a human thing. And it doesn't mean you don't have good mental toughness. Good mental toughness means that you're able to experience that, that disappointment, experience that frustration, let go of it, and then transition over to the next point. Obviously easier said than done. You cannot, I think the key though, is you cannot transition to the next point until you've let go of the, the mental frustration and anger, or disappointment, whatever, you know, you want to call it from the point before. And that's the, that in my opinion, in my experience, that's the, the hard part. The longer you dwell on the negativity and make that the focal point of the, the headspace that you have. Because the reality is we can only focus on one thing. We can only consciously or mental, mentally focus on one thing. So if, you're, if you are holding on to that previous point that happened 10 seconds, 20 seconds, you know, 30 seconds prior, and you're dwelling on it, replaying it, uh, rethinking uh, about how you should have made a different decision or what technical adjustment you, know, you should have made or you know, whatever, a million different things, how annoying your opponent's re reaction or response is uh, to the shot that you missed, whatever it is. If that is what's occupying your headspace, then you literally cannot pivot and move to the next point. And so you end up putting up your ball toss for the next point with that negativity still lingering. And then if something else negative happens, then this, this is where people get caught in a in, you know, snowball of, of negativity. So players like Rafa, I just want to be really clear in, in pointing this out because I just think it's a key thing and I, uh, oftentimes misperception. He's not mentally tough because he never has negativity or because he never gets angry or upset uh, because he never gets down on himself or certain, obviously because he never makes mistakes. All those things happen. He's so mentally tough because he's able to so quickly put whatever happens in the rear of a mirror. You almost never see him dwell on negativity. I can remember maybe one or two times ever uh, watching him where uh, he, he just kind of couldn't let he The snowball effect happened, right? And the negativity uh, persisted point after point after point for, you know, whatever, a set or, you know, whatever it was. Almost never, almost never happens. So if you want to be a great competitor, and it's such a big part of this game, I'm watching the, the two of them now in between the fourth and fifth set. It's incredible uh, tennis. Um, both of them incredibly mentally tough, by the way. Uh, Rafa, obviously, been, been around for a lot longer and I think has more of a reputation. Um, but there's a lot I could talk about with Medvedev as well, using the, the negativity 
uh, of the crowd using the villain, you know, uh, persona, I think is pretty fascinating uh, as well. But I, I saw that, the, that face of disappointment from Rafa, and I just knew I wanted to talk about it a little bit because I think a lot of people think that mental toughness is all about just having that you know, perfect exterior, and it's really not. It's not at all. It's okay to be human. It's okay to beat yourself up sometimes. You just have to get it over with and then move on to the next point and focus on the present instead of uh, dwelling on the past. Much easier said than done, as always. Hope you're doing well. I hope you're watching this match. Uh, the fifth set's just about to start. Take care. It's, what, what a great game, right? Man, it, it's such, such a, a privilege to be able to have lived through this era of tennis and uh, it's an incredible spectacle, you know, of competitors like this. So I hope you're enjoying it. Thanks for watching. I'll be I'll be back home again late late tonight, and uh, back to the normal grind. Take care.